Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you with your Honey Badger on steroids diamond dab of the day. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. As always, you enjoyed today's video. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Join Senior Stoner. It's becoming the thing to do. Send a like and I respond to all comments. Let's get started with today's topic. How do you stop being upset? This is just gold. There are so many things that can make us feel upset. From personal heartaches, to problems at work, to things as small as a rude comment or getting cut off in traffic. Unfortunately, unless you want to move to a remote island where you're the only inhabitant, which I admit sometimes sounds very appealing, you can't avoid those things. But what you can do is stop being upset about them. So think about life. Think about how much time we spend being upset. We get upset at even the smallest things, regardless of how much space. I always feel upset when I remove myself from a situation, come back to the person or situation, and then you know what happens? You can deal with it better. So I know it's helpful to separate yourself from a situation that makes you upset. But it's not okay to never come back to it. Emotion suppression has all kinds of negative health imp uh, implications. It can disrupt the normal balance, even of your hormones. And you could even have a premature cardiac event. I'm not kidding. So take a step away Practice some of what we're going to talk about, and if it's even too difficult, come back to it later. Well, you got to turn your wounds into wisdom. Flip, flip completely your perspective. That's correct. When we're upset, we tend to take on the role of the victim, thinking, why is this happening to me? But that makes us feel worse about ourselves, as if everyday life, think about it, that there's something innately wrong with us, or a fault, or something's upsetting that's happening. It's a lot easier to stop being upset if you flip your perspective and think maybe instead, what is this trying to teach me? I know it sounds silly, but it can make a huge difference. We can learn from everything in life. We've talked about it before. Whether it's breakups, hurtful words, even financial problems and bad health, it can all teach us something. So maybe the next time we're upset, think about what we can learn from the situation and focus on the lesson instead of the problem. Another way to flip perspective is to think of something positive. Either visualize a positive outcome to whatever is upsetting us or switch our focus to the thought that makes us happy. Because visualizing a positive image or result, whether it's related to your worries or not, can lead to increased happiness, restfulness, and decreased anxiety, which is the goal. You can also flip your perspective by practicing gratitude. Yes, by practicing gratitude, both in your everyday life and by thinking of the things that you're grateful for when you feel upset. Plus, gratitude enhances all aspects of our lives, leading to greater physical and emotional well-being. Why not play a little bit? You can learn a lot from kids because they're honest, unapologetically themselves, curious, imaginative, and no matter how hard they fall, they always want to keep playing. Let's focus on that last one for a second. When we're kids, we play all the time. But as we grow into the restraints of adulthood, that happens less and less often, and sometimes not at all. But even as adults, playing can help reduce stress and contribute to overall well-being, which makes it a lot easier to handle upsetting situations. Some people, researchers even, believe that play is essential, just like sleep. As an adult, playing doesn't have to be a game of tag or diving into a pit. It can be. But it doesn't have to be. But it's anything that engages us enough to take us away from a feeling of certain time and place. 
making it a great remedy for being upset. We can play by painting, playing a sport, reading, going for a hike, playing an instrument, dancing, endless options. So the next time we're upset, pick our favorite way to play and ease those negative feelings away with some fun. You got to de-stress. When we feel upset, our minds and bodies are impacted by stress, and we all know how much stress sucks. Stress can harm our musculoskeletal system, our respiratory, cardiovascular, endocrine, immune, gastrointestinal, nervous system, reproductive system, and even more. And while it can be expected that long-term or major stresses are what hurts us, even minor stress can have long-term health implications, everyone. Luckily, there are as many ways to de-stress as there are things that can make you stressed. So everyday life, okay, you feel upset sometimes. you got to find the things that work the best for you to make you not upset. There are a lot of ways to de-stress. You can take deep breaths, spend time in nature, meditate, write things, go to a nice happy place, move your body, exercise, take medicine, listen to music, do some meditation, and just generally find a way to let it go. Sometimes we just hold on to things that upset us, from holding grudges, against others to letting one thing ruin our whole day or even week. I attest that it happens all the time to me. It can feel almost impossible to let things go when you're feeling upset. And sometimes it even feels like we have no choice but to hold on. Maybe someone doesn't deserve to be forgiven or a situation is just plain unfair. Well, you know what? When you don't forgive someone, it leaves the person, you, hurting more yourself than anybody else. Because it's going to be resentment that you'll sit with. So, holding grudges can lead to heightened physical and mental pain. While forgiveness is associated with lower levels of stress and greater overall health. We've got to practice non-attachment. Because the root of suffering is attachment. Think about it. After letting ourselves be upset, we remind ourselves, okay? You've got to remind yourself that as a society, we tend to assign ourselves value based on things. Because we associate so much of our happiness with those things, when something happens to them, it's tough to let go of the negative feelings that come with it. Not just material possessions we're attached to either. Could be jobs, could be relationships, could be places we live. There's nothing wrong with caring about things. And we should definitely care about our relationships. But when we realize that our whole entirely on our own and that the external world doesn't define us, you know what? You spend a lot less time being upset. So through practicing non-attachment, we can learn that nothing is permanent. So whatever we're upset with right now, whatever has us, because something does always have us, this too shall pass. Maybe you need an extra push in the direction of non-attachment. But if you practice non-attachment, you truly can achieve advanced and enhanced wisdom with a greater sense of self-actualization because you've controlled yourself. And you got to think of all the wasted time. That is right. Sadness, anger, fear, stress rose to record highs in 2020. That's a lot of time in the world for people being upset. Have you ever gotten so upset about something that you've wasted hours, days, weeks, maybe even longer being upset about it? Just for it not to matter at all later on? I have been there. I'm sure we've all been there. And while we can't get that time back, we certainly can use it as a reminder. That's right, the lost time. A reminder to stop being upset next time we're feeling that way. Whenever we're upset, especially if it's about something we can't control, remember 
to think about how much time was lost. This has been The Real Senior Stoner talking about what we can do to deal with being upset. You know what? It's practical magic, I call it. Because if we just take one or two of these little tidbits and do them, our days, our lives will get better. This has been The Real Senior Stoner. Let's dive in to a honey badger hit with a diamond stone just for you. Here we go. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, send a like, and I truly appreciate every one of you. Have a great day. Here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Mrs. Stoner <coughs> can't even <coughs> use the honey badger anymore. Too strong for her. Me too, I think. Anyway, have a great day, everyone. And cheers from the real senior stoner. <coughs>